Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we are going to do a kind of throwback to what we did early in the channel, uh, and that is budget decks, uh, specifically for Arena. So generally when we speak budget decks, there's no kind of defined logic. Some people think 10 rares or mythics are a tribal deck, others think a two color deck might be tribal deck. Um, really what I'm trying to do here today is just put together as much as possible a free to play deck that folks can start off with. And with free to play, I mean commons and uncommons only, the things that are the most readily available wild cards. Um, in this particular deck, the only inclusion of a rare that I have is the dual land bright climb pathway. If you have the snarls, you can play those instead. Um, but really just trying to go as budget conscious as possible. Um, if you don't have these, have some numbers, just play basics. You can play the snow duel. Uh, the tapped one, the campus, stuff like that uh, instead, but we are a fairly aggressive deck, so we want as many untapped lines as possible. So the theme of this deck, it is a cast two deck, uh, looking to ideally cast two spells in a turn to get effects. And our payoffs are stuff like Monk of the Open Hand, which gets bigger this time you cast the second spell, Clarion Spirit, which allows you to get a 1-1 token, and Blood Sky Berserker, which gets two counters on it and gains menace till end of turn. Uh, we also have Kodak, Code Spell Cleric, which is very similar, but it wants to be the second spell to put a counter on something else. So we have just a lot of one drops and then some two drops to play along with it. We have Chaplain of the Alms, and I'm playing both this as well as Lunark Veteran, because they both have Disturb. So they're effectively two spells in one. So it's virtual card advantage when these things die that we can then get them back from our graveyard to cast second spell. So the Chaplain has Ward, so it has to pay mana. Your opponent has to pay an additional mana to be able to target it. And then its flip side gives all our creatures Ward. The Evasion as well, being Flying, is also useful. There's the Code Spells Cleric, which we mentioned. Homestead Charge, again, just two spells in one. Uh, so this is effectively, you can go like Monk on turn one, and then Homestead, Homestead, uh, get two spells on that. Uh, the Lunar Veteran gains us some life and then has the Disturb effect. Uh, we have some removal in the form of Portable Hole, Blood Chief's Thirst, and Infernal Grasp uh, to mix it around. And then we have a uh, Learn Package, just another way to kind of give us virtual card advantage uh, to have the sideboard. Uh, the sideboard, we're going Environmental Sciences, Reduced to Memory, Necrotic Fumes, uh, inkling summoning and pest summonings as some creatures, uh, expanded at tan anatomy uh, as just a pump spell, and then introduction as some removal. So let's test this out, see how it goes. Um, really, the intent here is see how these kind of smaller, low to the ground aggro decks play out. Um, the one like mono green might be a little bit of an issue just because they're a little bit chunkier than us, but. Really, we're a low to land count deck, we just want to kind of spam the board. If you do have the wild cards, I would consider adding in some of the creature lines, either the Eye Tyrant, as well as um, Cave of the Frost Giant. You can also look to build out a Snow Mana for Faceless Haven as well. Uh, so this hand's actually really good. So our curve, we're going to go Monk into Monk into Second Land, uh, Second Spell. Gets us a nice aggressive start here. So Chaplain being first strike is a tad annoying. Um, the way our hand's shaping up, we're going to go white, white. And I th think here we're just going to go the Luminarch. Pump up the jams. Wonder if the opponent's on clerics or a similar kind of build. An opponent, opponent's just had enough. One of the downsides of playing in the play queue, uh, but that really just demonstrates the effectiveness of the deck. Like, kind of really illustrates what we want to do with this. Next turn, we would have been able to drop another two spells. Our one drops are now one mana three threes, and it just allows you. Okay, the opponent's name is literally my GP status. O2 drop, O2 drop lunch. Uh, this hand's a little awkward. Opponent goes first. 
because this isn't really something you want to play on one necessarily but I think the like like having this with this bodes well and if we could hit a black source the one thing being budget or free to play our mana base isn't the best I don't want to put Shipwreck could be a couple different decks. Give me a white. You got an Esper. So one thing you want to look here. So because we know. We're playing this. If they do have a removal spell, they might be inclined to remove this beforehand, but see what they go. And that's what we saw there. Flunk, we were trying to bait that out before. Yeah, this hand, we just didn't draw the lands. Don't want to overcommit here. It's very likely they have a removal spell, but let's try now. We lose that on a point here, but need a black mana. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Against Esper, they're gonna have a. We didn't really have a that explosive of a draw. So we saw some of the good, some of the bad, the budget mana base, because ideally what you'd want is the is two snarls, four pathways, and a couple creature lines. Okay, we got our colors. Kind of hoping this hand or this we're playing a creature mirror. So these are useful. If we're against a control deck, these don't really do much. Hive on one, eye twitch. I don't want them to learn here. It's funny with this deck, we, we flood once we hit three mana, let alone four. Okay, so it's a Golgari version. Notably here, so one thing you always want to look at when you're playing around things, they didn't play out snow mana, so they're not a blood on the snow deck. Sedgemore. So I actually think we need to do this. Sedgemore is going to block us for days. Um, so we can go pest summonings, we can go reduce to memory. I th think we just need to go necrotic here. Oh, I don't even have the second black mana. I'm an idiot, idiot. So, that was dumb. Not as intended. I didn't want to give him the 3-2, but that was wrong in retrospect. So they're just like a pest deck. Yeah. Us hitting five lines is also pretty heavy. Um, I think we're going to hold back here. I want to double block on the Sedgemore. And then get a Lesson card. Yeah, we just flooded. Just flooded. So the mana base, it's been hurting us these games. 
haven't had like super explosive, but playing 20 lands, drawing 6, pretty high. Like you want to keep probably most 2 land hands and then just hope. You also don't want to mulligan too aggressively. Just you're naturally at a disadvantage for cards in this deck. But that was that game kind of just compounded from my air. If we drew the right card from the lesson, not realizing mana. Okay, I think this hand's fine. Um, so I'm actually gonna do this. Because next turn, this lets me go both I Twitch and Homestead if I want. Do this actually. So, seeing just Den, this can be a couple different decks. So, Rakdos has a couple builds. You have the more control versions, you have the treasure focused ones. So I'm putting this here because the ward is naturally going to tax them. Um, so if they do have another piece of spot removal, it might cost them more. Uh, let's hope they don't have meat hook. So I think now we're going to differentiate our threats. So this game's been going a smoother for us. Okay, just rebuying there. Turn everything sideways. Just hold the line, make it seem like we potentially have something. If they are blood on the snow deck, it's a little bad, but they still have to kill us for next turn. Them cycling through those is pretty good, so I'm going to hold this. So we might see blood on the snow here. There's no point of committing more to the board um, because next turn we can cast this and disturb this back if they have it. Yeah. And they're going to be able to loop this. Um, I could go pest summoning. That gives us a little bit wider of a board. Could go necrotic. Can also exile to stop the loop, which I don't mind. Um, couple options, couple options, couple options. I think we're just going to go inkling here. So they're kind of priced into doing this again. That lets me inkling summoning afterwards. Also have this champion. If they don't do it, I can kick and have four damage. It might be right. The fact they have two means like exiling doesn't really make a difference. Interesting that they decided not to attack again. Okay, so here.
I have a couple options. I can kick this to kill this, but they just get back thing. The other way forces them to blood on the snow. That lets me get another spell. So they just do this. I'm gonna do this. This loop is gonna kinda get us for a while. Because they're just going to be able to keep grinding us out. And this is at least what we've demonstrated this game is the effectiveness of these escape cards. We've had the learn, so we've gotten virtual card advantage this game. Okay, so they opted to not do that. I twitch of their own. No, or basically dead at this point. They've got enough going with the loop. Might have been right too, but we just couldn't push those last few points of damage. That's where having something like creature lands would be effective. We can see that board state. We, were, we kept force, being forced to commit to the board. Um, so this is something where if you have a creature land, you just kind of poke them with Hive of the Eye Tyrant, something of that nature. Sounds very good. No black mana, but I think any hand you can tr trigger double monk on turn two is good. Black line would be the best draw for us. Nope. Let's just keep drawing. Black spells. Nine black lands in our deck. That's actually like really sad. So they kind of don't want to block here. This is why mana bases are important. Another Esper Witch deck. Oh, come on. I don't... I'm going to add one Snarl just for video purposes. I will add the two Snarls. If you've used code Game Nights before, you should have at least two of these. They might be part of the free player. I just I want to show off the deck, what it can do, and we're losing more to our mana than anything else which doesn't bode super, super well. A hey, playable mana. So with Snarls, you want to always lead with your Snarls first. So next turn we're going to go Blood Sky, Berserker, and then follow it up with Double Spell. Boros shenanigans. Okay. So we'll do this. I don't think they can punish us too hard next turn with just the, with the Blade Master. Come on, opponent. This is another card you'd consider putting in our list. Flooding out a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so here... 
Normally I would do that at sorcery, but we need to play this. Um, with this having menace... I'm actually... Mm, mm, let's do this. Maybe it was wrong, but we can play this on defense. Any spell next turn plays well. They might be on uh, Sunfire, whatever the three mana bunch of effects. Playing this defense also has merit or putting a fourth counter. Mavinda. That plays out nicely. We can block here. Even this game we drew five lines. Yeah, this might just be like a blitz deck to have the double strike. They're targeting their Luminarch, so could be. Infernal Grasp has been handy. Ooh, Blade Historian, yeah. So they will get the double strike here. Let's see if they hold back. They do. So the question here, with double strike, we're close to dead. So I'm gonna attack like this. The reason being this forces them into a block this turn. And if I need to be defensive, I have these as an option. I want to hold this back because I get a trigger next turn. Uh, I think we're just doing this. Is there any of these that are instant? They got us! Bad pump spells dot deck. So we were trying to play around that. Um, we just didn't have enough blockers. They were hitting us for 14 trample. Yeah, because they had exaxes. Even if I played the other thing, we block with all three. We just get killed on the crackback. Let's give this one more, see how it feels. Blade Historian's a hell of a drug. Uh, opponent goes first. We'll try this out. Um, so I actually like leading this first. If they have a Frostbite, they can't target this turn because of Ward. So here we can go, do you, do you. We need some more gas, but Homestead can play pretty well. We have removal if needed. Um, I think given our mana situation, Next turn I can cast both of these, I have Infernal Grasp in this, we have some options. Um, I think I like playing to the board more. If 
There are Rakdos, not even Berserkers. Um, so I think this turn we do this. Two, so it's seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice and smooth. Blood Sky Obliteration. Okay, that was quick. Let's do one more. One more, perhaps. Being able to have like a bunch of one mana removal plays well. back shambling McGambling. okay so we're gonna do this so they can attack in but they don't get the ward so this plays worse if they have deadly dispute So I'm actually going to do this first. Okay, so they have the verse. Do you need a land this game? I was playing around Deadly Dispute. White land. You're not the white land I wanted for Christmas. So they might just take the treasure here. No play there is pretty good. They hit their land. Again, they're not a blood on the snow deck. Venture into the dungeon. They are a dungeon problem deck. What we need is a land. Perfect. There's a chance they are playing Nadar, so this makes it better, even with this being 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, we should have probably made that bigger. Probably just to exile that. Do this. These holes aren't looking too good. Like we can get rid of that, but that's the fourth piece of removal we've seen. Infernal Grasp. Oh! You'll love to see it. See if they take the block there. It's worth just holding these to see if we can trigger something. We'll do this. I can't attack into this now. Infernal Grasp 
Two, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, this game are just... Get an outrun. Yeah, so we've seen some good, we've seen some bad. You're playing a free-to-play deck. This is what you're going to kind of expect. Um, Vanishing Verse, a lot better removal. Um, we have some options that you can look to update. But ultimately, like that game, their removal lined up better than ours. So it is what it is. But I think if you're getting started, like I said, these... You can play them if you have them, if you don't. Um, but I think the shell here, you can look at stuff like Deadly Dispute as well, just to get some card advantage. But for the most part, you're gonna wanna keep your creatures on the board. But let me know what you think. Cheap, good starter deck to try to play things out. Lots of aggressive games. Even in those games that we lost, the games are usually done in a couple minutes. So if you just wanna do something to play rank quick, it's usually pretty good. Um, to give you an idea of what, see if I have the mono white deck. Is this it? Let me go. So there's a couple versions. There's a mono white variant um, with Clarion Spirit, Kabira Takedown, something we could play in that. So you'll have stuff like Paladin Class. This is all like the cast two. So there's this version of the deck. There's also this version very similar idea just lots of one drops you play like guiding voice uh, similar concept as well adding stuff like intrepid adversary to pump our team luminarch aspirant just continued ways to build threats on their own are all very important even stuff like maul the skyclaves to give our stuff a boost and just the creature lines um, so those are some ideas of like non-budget versions Anyways, appreciate everyone watching. If you can, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. All are free and easy ways to help out the channel grow. Thanks for watching. Have a great one, and stay safe out there.